So we're going to begin, we'll come over here to Leica settings and we will select FITC to start with. And so if we select FITC, the system will automatically turn on the appropriate laser and you see that the 488 laser line is illuminated here on the spectrum and it also gives us the emission curve. And so we know uh, that we're going to excite at 488 nanometers and FITC, uh, fluorescein isothiocyanate, the fluorophore that we've selected for this experiment, will yield or will emit uh, photons from about 520 up to almost 600. And so you see that our PMT, our photomultiplier tube, has automatically been activated. We see the gray bar underneath uh, the slider indicating that we're going to be collecting photons from that area of the spectrum. And uh, let's do one other thing. Let's, let's close down our other slider bars and move them to the right. So we'll move these down out of the way. And let's extend the length of this PMT. And so you can see that we're now going to be collecting photons from a larger area underneath this curve. So now if we click on live on the lower left, we should get an image on our right screen. And as you can see, we now have an image over here on the right screen. As you can see, we have a live image on the screen now, but it's a little defocused. And so it's always important to make sure that my focus is properly set. So I'm refocusing now, and you can see that the finer lines are becoming nice and sharp, but I'm getting a little brightness here, which may be indicative of my laser power. Maybe my laser power is a little too high. And uh, remember that I want to keep the laser power as low as possible to minimize photo bleaching. Now, in this particular specimen, we're only doing autofluorescence. There's no fluorophore been incubated or attached to this tissue. It's merely reacting to the laser light that is hitting it. And so in this sense, there's no cause for worry about photo bleaching. But when you're working with your live specimens and you've used a fluorophore, always be aware that whenever the laser is on, you're exciting that fluorophore and you're photo bleaching it, it's gonna fail to give off energy after a period of time. I can always lower my laser, if you look over under the visible laser tab, I can lower the power of the laser by sliding this bar down a little bit. And you can see that instantly my image uh, dims because I've lowered the laser power. So, so it's always a good idea to keep your laser power low if you can, but you might ask, well, how low? What is the benchmark? What should I use as a benchmark to determine my laser power? A good rule of thumb is to use what we call blue pixels and green pixels. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna click on this little lookup table uh, icon on the left-hand side of the right screen. And you'll see now that my image has been converted to basically blue pixels and green pixels. And I select my gain and my offset. It's kind of like contrast and brightness by using these two knobs on the smart bar. And so I want to increase my gain until I have a few blue pixels at around 900 or 950. As you can see here, I have quite a few blue pixels. So I'm gonna lower my smart gain down until I see only a few blue pixels. Now that's pretty low, which tells me that my laser could probably come down even a little bit more. A rule of thumb is to have the smart gain at around 900 to 950 volts. But for now, this will suffice. What about the offset? The offset allows me to lower the number of green pixels that I see on my image. And so I always wanna have a negative offset. So I'm gonna lower the offset down. Well, actually you can see uh, I'm, not, I'm not lowering it. I'm actually having to raise it a little bit, but it's still a negative number. And you'll see that my green pixels start to go away. And I wanna find the spot where I have just a few green pixels. And the sensitivity of this knob is a little low right now. I can increase the sensitivity of it because it seems to be going from 
all green pixels to no green pixels. But a good rule of thumb is a smart offset, negative minus one, minus uh, point, sorry, negative minus point one, point two, or point three. So now I've finished using my lookup table. My gain and my offset are set approximately where they should be. So I'm going to click again on the lookup look up table twice. I go to grayscale and then back to my green color. And now you can see my image nicely illuminated and my smart gain and my offset are set where I should have them. In order to improve our image quality for this specific application, I've increased the laser power a little bit. So let's once again look at our lookup table. We'll click on the lookup table. And now remember, we want to have a few blue pixels. So we'll, we'll increase our smart gain upwards of 900. I'm now at 925. And you can see I have uh, a good amount of pixels here, but not too many. And again, my offset is set pretty much where I want it right at the point where the green pixels go away. So I have a smart gain of 925, which is where I should be for my laser power, and a smart offset of minus 0.3. Now I can click through my lookup table again, and now I can see I have a pretty decent image.